mean it's too difficult for him. He made the world in all its fullness. He's the one, friend. God created you and me. He created for us to be that, that head, not the tail. He created for us to, to live above our circumstances, friend. Amen. And he sees it that nothing is too difficult for them. Have you ever wished that you could just sit down and have a heart to heart with God? I did that this week. I, I, I just said, Lord, I just wish I could just sit down with you face to face. Now, I, I, come on, I know that, you know, and we see the Lord, I know all what the Word says, but just, just in, you know, come on, just, just reality terms. Have you ever been like that? Lord, I just wish I could sit down with you and just talk to you. Man to man, you know, mono to mono, you know, alpha to alpha. <laughs> you know, let's just sit down and talk about these things. Have you ever been that way? Yeah. Come on. Have you ever been that way? What would you ask him? Come on. What would you ask him? I know what I would ask him. What do you want me to do? Just, just, just be real with me. Tell me all about it. Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? And what we would ask is, Lord, what is your will? What is your will? What do you want me to do? Have you ever wished you could just look in the eyes and say, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? We've all had moments when we want to hear God's voice and receive direction. We have had times where we need him in regarding a, a relationship or a, a business decision or, or a, a family crisis or whatever it might be. Maybe it's a life choice. Maybe you're here this morning and you need to make a decision and then to be more faithful to God. Maybe you're here this morning and you need to make a decision to follow him. Maybe you're here this morning and you're faced with a great decision of whether to, 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 to go, to come, or to, 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 to turn right or turn left, spiritually speaking, friend. Well, listen, I would say this morning that this is your morning. This is your morning. This is your day, friend. Amen. This is your day, and your decisions matter to God. They matter to God. See, we make our decisions, and our decisions turn around and make us. Do you hear me? I'm on you quiet this morning. Are you taking this in? Now, last week, boy, I mean, couldn't even sit you down. You were just praising. Oh, man, you were shouting. You were bugging. You were jerking. Some of you was doing a two-step. Some of you was doing a two-step thing. Whoa, couldn't even sit you down. So you're taking this in. See, we make our decisions, and our decisions turn around and make us. They make us. Many, many times we, we research, we study, we, we, we narrow our options down, we, we talk about it with our family, with our friends, we pray about it, we hope for that our decision is the will of God, but in the end, we make the decision, we make the choice, so my question to you is how do we know where to go? How do we know how to get there? Do we stop and ask a quick king? Maybe we need to stop and ask the king of kings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amen. Ask the king of kings. Amen. How do we know where to go? Romans 12, 2, what? Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. I like what the NIV says here. He said, the NIV says, then you will be able to test. King James says, prove. Prove, same thing. Prove, test. Why would Paul say these words? Why would Paul say these, these, these action words, these adverbs of proving, of testing what God's will is? Because, amen, uh, Paul understood that discovering God's will is not a simple process. Yeah. It's not a simple process. It was the will of God that Melissa and I uh, uh, leave Cocoa, Coast, Florida, and come to Ocala. Was it easy? No. <laughs> No, I'll tell you, no, it wasn't. In the, you know why it wasn't easy? Because I got in the way. This big old thing right here. What I should have done is I should have just jerked it up and said, come on. That's what I should have done. But I didn't do it. I argued. I wrestled with the Lord. I fought. I wrestled with my wife. Not literally, but just, you know. Maybe literally. No. <laughs> We fought. I said, Lord, I don't want to go to Ocala. I want to stay here in Coco. My business is here. My children are here. We're in a fine school. They were in private school. We were, we were doing well. The church was doing well. Everything was going great. I don't want to go to Ocala. But he said, boy, it's not what you want. It's about what I want, yeah. friend. Amen. And a lot of times, Apostle Paul used this word prove, amen, and test. Because finding the will of God is not always easy. Amen. Amen. It's not always easy, friend. It's not always easy.
always easy. And in this process, you need to understand, and I had to understand, that God's will, uh, His will in our life, He wants us to know that will. He wants us to know that. You know what? And I'll argue with people, and I'll argue with my wife. As soon as we pulled on the property, I knew it was God's will. I still just thought it. <laughs> Lord, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. It's kind of like Jonah. I don't want to go to Nineveh. You know? I don't want to. Yeah. Hallelujah. But he wants us to know his will. He, listen, God can put you exactly where you want to be. He can arrange all the details beforehand. He can open doors. He can remove obstacles. He can, he can make your choices fit into his plans. Amen. And you, you end up at the right place at the right time, friend. He can even take mistakes that we have done, tragedy in our life, and turn them to good. Amen. For his glory. Do you believe that? He can do that. He can do that. He will do that. He will do every bit that he says, but we have to be willing. Willing. We've got to be willing, friend. We've got to be willing to do his will. God's will be done. The Lord's will be done. Hallelujah. Uh, my, my, my grandfather, uh, 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 everything he did, Everything he did before he did it, he said, the Lord's will be done. Every, every time, every time, he would I mean, he was just, he, he wouldn't even go over down the street, you know, and tell you he'll be back. He said, if the Lord's will, I'll be back. You know, well, granddad, I want you to come back. I think the Lord wants you to come back now. You know, but, but, but that, so many times we forget it's all about God. It's not about us. It's his will be done, not our will be done, but his will be done in our lives. All the Lord needs is you to be willing, to have a willing heart, a heart that will say, not my will, but thy will be done. Now, does this mean that we won't, that we, uh, won't have to make decisions? No. <laughs> no. We still got to make decisions. Why? Because we live in a natural world. We have to make decisions. But what this does mean about our decision is it takes the pressure off. It takes the pressure off. We've prayed about it. We've talked about it. We've taken it to the Lord. We've researched our options. We've done everything possible that we could do. And the Bible says when you've done all you can, stand. Stand upon the truth of God. Step out in faith. Make your decision and watch what God will do. He'll do that, friend. He'll make that impossible thing possible in your life. I would somebody praise him this morning. directs my past too. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So how do you know where to go? How do you know where to go? Well, we have to stop and we have to ask for directions. Turn to his word. You'll find that uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 9, in his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. We plan a trip, right? Come on, we've all done trips. We plan a trip from point A to point B. And, but when we leave that trip, it's the Lord who guides us. It's the Lord who keeps his hand upon us. It's the Lord who keeps his hands upon the vehicles that travel past us. Amen. I can't tell you how many times we've had to pull over for this or that and the other and then go on up the road in two minutes. There's an accident that just happened right before us. I can't tell you how many times that has happened. It happened to us on our, on our, our missions trip. Uh, we, we, we had to pull over for some uncertainty thing and just maybe two to three minutes got back on the interstate and, and a tractor trailer just across. He was climbing out of his vehicle. Just across the interstate. God will direct our steps. He, listen, he will take care of his people, friend. Uh, that old saying says that man proposes, but God disposes. And then you can make all your plans you want. And it's good to plan. I hear my heart. It's good to plan. I want you to plan. If you plan to, if you don't, if, if you if you fail to plan, then you then you plan to fail, and God doesn't want you to fail. He wants you to succeed, friend. But in the end, you need to understand that God determines every step you take, every move you make. There is no accident in God. It's not an accident that you're here this morning. You're not here by accident. See, if you're not here by accident. God has chosen you this morning to be here, to hear this word, because this word is for you, it's for me, amen, this is for us, 
anybody that God will direct us, but we have to be willing to hear his voice. Yeah. Hear his voice. Yeah. Hallelujah. There, there, there's no random events in God. I tell people all the time, there's not even luck. I don't believe in luck. I believe in blessing. Yeah. I believe in blessing. Uh, well, out, out there in the sports world, you hear all the time, oh, that was a lucky catch, or that was an unlucky thing, or, oh, you guys lucked out today, you won. I tell them all the time, I rebuke them. I say, no, we're just blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Blessed, blessed, yeah. blessed, friend. Hallelujah. You can, you, can, you can make all the plans you like, but God gets the last word. He gets the last word, friend. Amen. And God wants to lead you this morning into, to righteousness. On, on, on our journey, right. on this journey road we're traveling, yes. the old song says, many times I've stumbled on my way. But praise the Lord, I'll soon be leaving hey, to a land of inner peace. Amen. And you understand. That old song says, oh, I can see the lights of home. I can see him on his throne. I'm too near to turn back now. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm heaven bound. Are you heaven bound this morning? Are you heaven bound? Are you heaven bound? Hallelujah. Are you heaven bound? This is the Lord. The Lord directs our paths to holiness, to righteousness, to faithfulness. That's where he wants us to get. Remember how I said God wants us here? Amen. God wants us here, not here. Well, you know what happens up here? It's holiness. It's faithfulness. It's righteousness. That's the security of God. That's where he wants us, friend. He wants us to say, Lord, take my heart, amen, and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take all these things, Lord, and I give it to you. I give it to you this morning. I give it to you. How do you know where to go? How do you know? Well, you got to follow the Lord. Proverbs 20, 24 says, a, a man's steps are directed by the Lord. Now, see, most of us don't understand where we've come from. We don't even know where we are right now. So many times, you're like an airplane that's kind of lost its bearings. You're in that vertigo mode, or you don't know where you're coming, or you're going. You, you, you're, just, you're just kind of in a state of just routine, friend. But this morning, God sees the big picture, and he has a plan for your life, and he wants more for you than just routine. He wants more for you than just what's on the natural. He wants a super natural in your life. He wants you to achieve all that you can achieve. He wants you to strive and stretch and strain for success in Jesus Christ. He wants you to never give up, never give in, but give your all every day of your life for Him, for He is God. And when He sits on the throne, He's a mighty God, and He's here for you this morning. He's here for you this morning. Here for you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm closing. I think. I met, I met a man this week, and as I was talking with him, he was telling me about, he's one of those guys that has to know everything. He's got to know it all. You know, if you're having a problem with your car, he knows it, because he knows the know it all. If you're having a problem with your, your marriage, he knows it, because he knows it all. I mean, he's one of those guys, he got to know everything. And you know what I told him? I said, I don't mean to be rude. I said, but you don't know everything. <laughs> you don't know everything, friend. And in our Christian world, there are things that we just don't know. We just don't know. Did Moses know how to lead the children out of Egypt? No. God told him that he did it. Did Noah know anything about building an ark? No. He stepped out in faith and God helped him. Did the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, did they know how they were going to get delivered? They only knew that their lives were in God's hand, friend. That's all they knew. And then did Peter know what it was like to walk on water? No. But when he stepped out, he felt the presence of God lift him and help him. And the presence of God is here this morning. 